The following is an exclusive presentation of Jessup Broadcast, the sports leader in Southeast Georgia. And good morning. You're listening to the Big Dog WIFO FM in Jessup 105.5 on your FM dial, Big Dog Country Radio. It is 8 o'clock on this Tuesday morning, the uh, what is the day? The 10th day of March. World famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply located on Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessup and by Nips Car Wash located on Highway 301 South here in Jessup. And good morning, Bob. How you doing? I'm good. You doing good? All right. Doing good. Do want to pass along, you know, a lot of people call on about Patty Bryant. She had surgery up in Moultrie, Georgia for back six and a half hour surgery, but the surgery went well, so just want to pass that information along. All right. I think we have Senator Blake Tillery on the phone with us right now. Good morning, Senator. Are you there? Okay, here we go. Let's get on there. Go ahead. Okay, we got Blake Tillery on again. The big news, of course, the House leaders pushed back hard on Governor Kemp's spending cuts yesterday. Again, the teacher pay raise got cut in half. We kind of talked about that last week, Blake. So, if you think that's the way it's going to go? To get, they're going to get a thousand instead of two thousand? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'll be honest with you, uh, Bob. I, I'm running in between meeting rooms myself right now and didn't hear the first part of what you said. I said the story out of Atlanta is the House leaders pushed back hard on the governor Kemp's spending cuts, and they cut the teacher pay raise from $2,000 to $1,000. So we talked about that last week. So do you think that's what's going to happen? They're eventually going to get the $1,000? Oh, man, I think it's still early. Who knows? Um, they, did, they did a lot. The House went and put a lot of money back in in places that it's really hard to pull out of. Um, you know, we had a $60 million cut to correctional officers. They put a lot of that money back in. Um, they were able to put money back in services in different areas, things that matter in our area. The way they funded that is that we've been talking about there's a revenue issue. Um, in other words, the state revenues aren't growing as fast as they were, so some people would say that we have a spending issue, not a revenue issue, and I couldn't argue with that. Okay. Um, the way they funded that is they did it with a by taking the $2,000 raise to $1,000. They took and moved the pay raise to start from July. They moved it down to September, which is how we used to do it. Um, and then they, uh, that was the main way they moved money around. But it's still early. You've got the Senate's got to go through our budget in the next two weeks, and then there's got to be conference. We'll see if we can work something out here. If not, um, you know, again, uh, we'll work for it again next year as well. Uh, it's just interesting. I said the story goes that, you know, as you mentioned, the House put a bunch of money back in. It said that the, you know, they cut the teacher pay raise in half. They also put money back in other places, but they said that they, what struck me is that the governor's proposed cuts did not have the back of the House or Senate leaders. They simply didn't support many of the cuts he recommended. So it seems like well, it's an interesting House, story out there. I don't know that we can speak to the Senate yet. Um, again, we don't get the budget until afterwards, so we'll see if it has its backing then. But this is, this, this is uh, while it's making a lot of news this time, this is every year. The governor is going to propose the budget. The House is going to get it swipe at it. Remember that that, that line item is a really big line item. It's roughly four hundred million dollars. The teacher pay raise. So when they if they cut it to half, that gives them two hundred million that they can spend to put back into family connections, back into defects, back into corrections, um, mental health, etc. That's what they did. Um, but because of where they put it back, it will it makes it very difficult for the Senate to pull that money back to put it back in teacher pay raises. So, um, like I said, I, I told you that the road was going to get rocky. The, big, the truth of it is this, though. While this road's a little bit rocky, next year's road is going to be even rockier. Um, so, you know, batten down the hatches and get prepared. Next January, it's going to be even worse. All right. So what else do we need to know? Like I said, besides working on the budget, what are some of the other amendments that people need to be aware of? Yeah, today we've got, I think, 27 or 28 bills on the Senate floor, so we'll be here pretty late tonight, probably average probably about 10.30 this evening. Um, and then they range from everything from setting the musky down grape as the state official grape. <laughs> I suppose that. That's Tyler Harper over in Osceola. We'll see if that comes out today. To um, totally redoing the Civil Practice Act for Georgia. Um, some folks say we've had some nuclear verdicts. Um, I'll tell you, as a lawyer, I'll tell you, I'm tired of seeing advertisements on, on every corner for lawyer this, lawyer that. I think that kind of creates a perverse incentive for 
for folks that they um, that we might need to, to handle a little bit. Don't know that this bill that we've got today is going to. I think it probably actually limits access to courts. So uh, that's going to be on the floor. So a wide variety of things. You're going to see something about the Special Needs Scholarship Act, which is going to come out today. It basically says we know that schools have a uh, the most expensive job for them to, to treat as someone with special needs. Can we take that state money, use it elsewhere, and possibly uh, do that maybe a little more efficiently? There's some, there's an argument back from the schools that if you do that, the folks who are doing the the uh, the new folks you'd be using maybe don't have the stringent requirements and testing protocols that, that the schools have. They may have a good argument on that, too. It might be something we need to address on the school end um, in another bill as well. But this is a precursor as we're looking at things overall. I've told you before, we spent 54% of our budget on education and 23% on health care. We've got to find ways to do those things more efficiently, which means with less money. Um, to be able to fund the other things that you're talking about in corrections, in um, defects, in family connections, et cetera, it's really going to be a bind over the next 18 months. And that was before we had 40% reduction in the ports because of corona. Uh, so now that you've got another 40% reduction in port traffic, that's going to affect the Georgia economy. There's just no way it, it can't. Um, one thing I've been doing here is looking around at at restaurants, I don't like to eat out, but I would go to restaurants in the evening on the way home and just kind of look and see how many people are there. They're still full. Um, so I think we're still having commerce turn over. The problem we're going to have, though, is uh, is that port traffic creates a lot of jobs. And if, we, if the port traffic's 40% reduced, is the truck traffic going to be 40% reduced? Uh, and if, and if you know, that's a, that's a huge cost to our area, a huge uh, uh, employer in our area. You mentioned the coronavirus, you know, that story continues to resonate across the country. I saw yesterday where the Boston, uh, city of Boston has uh, canceled their St. Patrick's Day festivities due to the coronavirus. And there's several sporting events that have been canceled under the NCAA semifinals and finals except for Atlanta. No word on them possibly canceling that, is there? I haven't heard of that yet. Um, I'll tell you just a personal note. My, my wife, you know, is a physician, grew up trained in, in uh, Wayne County High School. But um, she was on a conference to Washington, D.C., an OBGYN conference. She's an OB. And her, she got an email Friday night, supposed to fly out Saturday morning, that said, if you go, we will not reimburse you. And if you get quarantined for three weeks, we will not pay you. Um, <laughs> so that, that made our decision very clear. Right, she's definitely <laughs> not going. Well, I've heard there's a lot today. more teleconferencing going on today than they were, let's just say, a month or two ago. A whole lot more. And one of the things, I mean, we even have had, had to kind of institute protocols of what we do here in the Senate. You're going to see today, while many of you have come up and visited with me before, and we can get pictures in the front of the chamber, and we can do what's called resolutions of decorum where you walk up on top of the, the podium there with the lieutenant governor and they shake your hand take a picture you get to say one or two words to the senate that is all but none of that's happening if we do decorum resolutions now you will be in the balcony again trying to separate the mixings of populations a little bit trying to keep us healthy um trying to keep us from if one of us is sick from infecting others um because of the uh, of, of obviously the scare. What we, we were just briefed on it. One of the meeting room I just walked out of was the governor's uh, floor leaders briefing on cor partly on the coronavirus, and uh, we have six confirmed cases in Georgia now. Eleven, um, I forgot the word they used, but pending, likely. So it looks like our number may be going to seventeen. Um, although we did have someone who we thought was pending who went the other way. So. <laughs> You know, you never can. You can't be certain right now. Well, I heard the frame, uh, the, the the phrase today called uh, social separation, where where you're encouraged when you're interacting with people, you're encouraged to stay x amount of feet back from them, about four feet, something like that, and talk to them, and, and don't make any skin to skin contact. Um, uh, if you think that uh, someone's sick, or you think that you're sick, um, have you heard any of that? Is what you're doing up there in the Capitol, a little social separation there, where you're not actually physically touching each other handshakes or fun, fist bumps or anything like that a whole lot less handshaking going on which is a little bit odd for us from the south you know the first thing you want to do is shake somebody's hand or give them a hug a whole lot less of that going around right now okay 
Somebody had texted in last week, and I didn't get a chance to get to it, and they did it again this morning, so I want to ask you this. It says, uh, for Senator Blake Tillery, are they putting a cruise ship terminal in Savannah eventually in the next two to three years? Have you, have you heard anything like that? Not heard anything like that. You know, uh, I know guys, but uh, is expanding um, the port area. We're, we were expanding the port pre-corona. I think the plans were still in to, to put more cranes. And by expanding the port, I mean we're talking about more cranes coming in to move freight and logistical items through through the port and keep it going. Uh, but I have not heard about a cruise ship. Okay. All right, Bob. Okay. Again, anything else we need to know about before we let you go? I have 27, 28 bills on the floor today. Like I said, covered a gambit of issues. So feel free if there's things going on to pick up the phone and holler at me. I tried to hit the two or three big ones and tell y'all where I stand on them. But if you got other questions, don't hesitate to holler. Cell phone number is still 912-245-9915. Okay, Blake. Always good to talk to you on Tuesdays. Stay safe in Atlanta. Thanks, guys. Talk to y'all soon. All right, take care. All right, Senator Blake Tillery live from Atlanta this morning here on Tuesdays with Tillery. You're listening to WIFO 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio. And coming up in just a moment here on the Big Dog, we got guest in the world famous Butch and Bob Show Green Room. We'll have them on in a moment. Here's your WIFO forecast. Hi, good morning. We stay mostly cloudy. Southwest breeze, mid-70s. Then tonight, mostly cloudy, becoming more partly cloudy. There's a 20% chance of evening showers, upper 50s. Tomorrow, partly sunny. 30% chance of showers, slight chance of thunderstorms, upper 70s. Thursday, partly sunny, slight chance of showers and thunderstorms, upper 70s. Friday, partly sunny, slight chance of showers. Georgia meteorologist John Weatherby in the GNN Weather Center. Coming your way Saturday, April 4th, the 50th anniversary of WYFO's community-wide Easter egg hunt and fun day to be held on the grounds of Unity Church of God. It will be bigger and better than ever. Keep tuned in for all the details on how it will be a fantastic fun day for kids 12 and under. Braves spring training is underway from the new facility in Northport, Florida. And the Braves radio network is bringing you spring training baseball as the team rounds out their 2020 roster. This one is hammered. A rocket high into the heavens and deep to left field and gone. Ronald Acuna punctuates this one with a two-run home run deep to left. Every pitch of spring training all the way to opening day is right here on the Atlanta Braves radio network. Attention business owners and managers. How would you like your advertising message to reach thousands of potential customers here in Southeast Georgia? Just team up with the Atlanta Braves and WIFO Radio and be an official Braves sponsor. It's very easy and affordable to do. For complete information, call WIFO at 912-427-3711 weekdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Or email us anytime at bigdogstaff at bellsouth.net. Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO, 105.5 FM, and Jessa Butch Hubbard here with you, along with Bob Morgan, world-famous Butch and Bob show for this Tuesday morning. And, Bob, uh, we've got some winners in here this morning. Yeah, we've got a smoke show in there, but they got a big event coming up this weekend. So, Timmy Rozier and Jessa Pichon here talk about what's taking place this Saturday. Well, first of all, if you all do the Saturday thing, just congratulations on your winning the awards there at Taste of Wayne. Thank you. Thank you, what sir. what were the two that y'all won again? Uh, the ICER Award, which is the... Incredibly Ice. Incredibly Ice, yeah, <laughs> something. That's um, the best booth, and then we won the People's Choice. Okay. All right. Now you can talk about what's coming up. All right. Uh, we just wanted to come on and remind everybody we're going to have a state contest this Saturday downtown. Uh, we're going to shut down Broad Street from Cherry to Sugar and Spice. Um, we have about 36 teams signed up so far. We decided to do a double this year. So that actually means the majority of them is going to cook two times. So uh, it'll, it'll be a little bit more than, I guess, what we actually did last year. We really just wanted to give our sponsors a little bit of airtime and thank them. Um, Mike Birch Ford, Harris Ace Hardware, David Earl Keith, uh, Sean O'Quinn, Mac 44, uh, Armstrong Family Dentistry, Nelson Brown, Wayne Memorial Hospital, r r Automotive, Sheriff John G. Carter, Coastal Medical Supply, Leah Jones Attorney, Mike Long Agency, Prime South, Jessup Tire, uh, Design Landscape, Reliable Roll-Off, Precision Cutting, Jessup Insurance Agency, and the Wayne County Board of Tourism. Uh, can't thank those guys enough. We really couldn't do this stuff without them. They're always quick to volunteer, and uh, we really appreciate it. 
they won't let you cut it off even with peaches and peaches going on this weekend? Well, he said they would. Okay. I'm just curious. <laughs> that's, well, that's it's just of, one little old street. Yeah, it's just that one much. block from that's Cherry Street to, to Walnut Street. <laughs> from, Cher to, uh, from Cherry Street to Walnut Street. Are y'all going to be mainly in the street or in the parking lot of the uh, um, train depot? We'll be mainly in the street. In Mainly in the street there between Cherry Street and Walnut Street there yeah. along Broad Street. They usually got cars over there in the train station. So, yeah. you know, people in and out to the train. we got to leave them access for that. But, right. Um, they can come in from the overpass down the side street there and yeah and well, cutting broad we'll street that way or, yeah. or anywhere else i mean you just got a small area yeah. that you're cutting off so, there yeah yep it's gonna be a good time it's gonna be uh last up last i heard six of the top ten in the in the world and the points is gonna be in just georgia saturday so, so this is this is a big deal here we, got mean, two we, we don't have just backyard barbecuers like the rest of us these no. these are the guys who who do it for a, 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 I wouldn't say a living, but for a, for a paying hobby. Let's yeah, put it that way. Yes. Right. Um, they do a, a points chase, the top ten in the world, and then they do it, the world championship in Texas. Then they they all cook against each other. Um, okay, now what is this uh, barbecue cook off and a competition for? It's a it's the SCA State Cook Off Association, and they we do we do do it to raise money for the Shriners. Just okay. a trying club. So. All right. And uh, who organizes and puts this together? Timmy does. He has to organize it because if I do it, I can't cook in it. So he's he's the promoter and he's the organizer and he does all the legwork. With a lot of help. <laughs> and, and Teddy, are you with anyone or you just do it yourself? How does that work? Uh, it's just us as a team, really. Okay. Uh, I mean, if... Like he said, if if we put him on there as a promoter, then he can't cook. So, all right, yeah, I'm just I'm just a fall guy. Okay, and how many teams are y'all going to have there cooking this? We Saturday? have 36 so far. We'd like to have some more, but uh, you know, 36 teams. And what all will they be cooking? Steak, just steak. Well, we're gonna have an ancillary. We're gonna do chicken wings, and we're gonna have another one in uh, anything blueberry. But um, so I mean, blueberry? It, it could be any frame, anything from. Cheesecake, the moonshine, whatever, you, whatever, whatever, whatever you can make with blueberry in it, bring it down here. Law enforcement did not pay attention. To that. <laughs> so, yeah. You didn't hear that. But it's it's uh, we got we got two guys coming from Texas. I think there's one coming from Maryland. Um, and they just they'll group up and all ride together with it being a they got a chance to get double points the same day. All right, are they so, pay to get in the tournament. I mean, yes, how are you making yes, money with this to get money to the Shriners? It's a hundred fifty dollar entry mm -hmm. for each for each contest that you cook, not just for the steak. Now the chicken wing and the blueberries twenty five dollar entry. Okay, mm -hmm. but out of that hundred fifty, we have to pay for the steaks. We had to pay the sanctioning fee. We have to pay all that, and whatever's left goes to the Shriners. Okay, but after, you know, do after the teams the win money, yes, yes. they win yeah. money also. Yes, it's a, it's a fifteen hundred first place. Fifteen hundred for first place. Okay, let's just just average uh, uh, steak lovers out there, and, and what do we get out of it? What do we what will we get to see? What will we get out of going down there and watching this competition? Well, you get to see if you're there early enough. You can see us go through the steak draw, where we go through. They lay all the steaks out on the table. We pick what steaks we want in mm -hmm. order. Um, and then you see how teams prep their steaks, all the steps they go through. Lots of them don't mind if you stand there and watch them as long as you're not in their way. Um, you can watch them prep steaks, get them ready. You can watch them cook them, how they put them in the box, how they trim them, how they tie them up, all of that. And then hopefully that when everybody's turned in, everybody will buy a steak plate for the Shriners and we can... We so that's that's what we can do as the average person out there is buy a steak plate. Now, is it right. from the steaks they're using for competition or no. they just cook another steak? It's, they'll, they'll cook other steaks. It's gonna, cook other but, steaks. But we're going to get the teams to help us cook them. That's yes. one okay. good thing about steak contest is if you're doing a fundraiser, most of the guys will hang around after they've turned in their steaks, mm -hmm. once they got their mess cleaned up, and they'll help you cook the steaks that you got to sell. Okay, right. now so, when will that start? Won't people be able to go down there and buy the steak plates? 4, and watch? 4, 30, 4 Saturday 30 at Sugar and Spice from 4.30 4, to 6. 4.30 to 6, you can go it, buy, a steak, buy a steak plate. And what all comes with a steak plate? It's competition grade steak. It'll have steak, green beans, and a baked potato. I think so. Yeah. Okay. All right. And so that's uh, from four thirty six. And how much are the steak plates? Twenty five dollars. Twenty five dollars, and you get a nice steak, probably the best you've ever had. <laughs> and <we've laughs> one, of the, one of the best. Let's just put it this way: one of the yeah. best you've ever had. And of course, the money goes toward the Shriners to help with the Shriners hospitals, and we all know what that means to so many, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds or thousands of kids the years that have been able to um, get uh, free medical care there, along with the families uh, being helped out. 
Yes, yeah. sir. We're also giving away a Traeger pellet smoker, uh, roughly a thousand dollar value, donated by Colby Harris at Harris Ace Hardware. Tickets are five dollars a piece. You can't beat five dollars for a thousand dollar worth of you cannot uh, $5. pellet smoker. So there's uh, there's a few tickets left. If you want some, you better call me or Joseph or get a hold of us on Facebook or something. But uh, that's a pretty good deal. And I'd say. And we're going to give it away Saturday at the awards. We'll it will be, be there, a- and we will give it away. It's already assembled. You don't have to worry about that. I mean, what time will the awards ceremony? S- 6 o'clock at the train depot. All right, 6 we'll o'clock. We'll be right out front. Okay. When will the, uh, comp- uh, the competitors you know, we'll kind of wrap up their, uh, their, their competition? I think our last turn ends at 3.30. All right. So from 3.30 to 6. Who's judging? They bring their own judges. That way it's not a local... Um, you don't wind up with so the organization itself, right? Their own, SCA no. they they put it out there. They take care of the judges. You pay them a sanctioning fee. They take care of the organi- organizing it. They come and set up. They take care of the teams. They do the score and they take care of the judges. Basically, all we got to do is provide them the the, the steaks and the bottles of water and stuff that they got to have, and they take care of the rest. Okay. So, and uh, does it have an official name for this competition? Do y'all have a the, name? The second annual Jessup Shrine Club State. Cook off, isn't that it? Okay, and challenge, and challenge, 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 and you got these top uh, teams from the country coming in. The world champion will be here from Texas. From Texas, and there's two champion. guys coming from Maryland. I think one so. Guy, yeah. One, no, two from Texas, one from Maryland. Yeah. So what makes a difference between a world champion cooking a steak versus just just slapping one on the grill in the backyard? I mean, what all do they do <laughs> about? Twenty thousand dollars in his pocket. <laughs> I mean, what can make a steak take so much better than just? Is it the it's, seasoning? Is it's, it the it's ste- some of all of it? It's some it's of all of on so many different things. Even they, I mean, they even judge the grill marks on a steak. They do. Oh, um, they do. Yeah. Taste, yeah. texture, um, the whole appearance, appearance yeah. tenderness. Yeah, and and are they all cooked to a certain? Is it medium rare? Medium, it's supposed to be medium. Medium, just a hint of pink through it. Yep. Okay, medium hint of pink. So. Okay. They'll be tired of eating steaks. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we had some of the, the ancillaries, they let whoever's there, Shriners, some of the Shriners guys that weren't involved with the contest, they got to do some judging last year. And I told them, I said, pace yourself, because when you start eating chicken wings, you're going to wind up eating a lot more than you want to if you yeah, don't care. Yeah, when they didn't listen, and some of them come out of there, they were hurting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they know now it's just one don't or two bites. Don't eat that whole chicken wing. Right. Just yeah. nibble on this one, nibble on that one if you're, if you're a judge. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. But we'll, 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 have some, we'll have some local judges for the... For the ancillaries, but as far as the state contest, they handle that part. Okay, so. now do you have local folks involved in this uh, the tournament, this challenge? We a have few, a few, a few, not many, not as many as we'd like to have, but I don't know if they're intimidated or what. But oh, yeah. we, we got a few that's willing well, to step what about, up. What and about try. for the ancillary? I mean, you could have them for that, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah. 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 All they we'll got take them pay, any way we can get them. Pay twenty five dollars and sign yeah. up, and, that, and that's chicken wings and what else? Anything, Anything blueberry. blueberry. Anything blueberry. Now, how do you grill up blueberry you, stuff? Any way you can cook it. Yeah, you can make a blueberry you cheesecake. On you, a grill. You can, no, you don't have to be on a grill. It just, doesn't have to be on a grill. No. Just, you got Anything to, blueberry. You have to prepare blueberry it there. Pie, you yeah. got to, oh, you got to like a pie now, you, or you don't cake. Have, or, you don't necessarily have to cook it there, uh-huh. but you have to assemble the plate to turn in there. All right. So... We're going to make something that we're going to have prepared, and all we're going to have to do is put it together and cook it when we get there. Anything blueberry. Yep. All we're, right. We're cooking ours in an air fryer, by the way. An air fryer. Mm-hmm. And cooking what? I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> it's a surprise. <laughs> I didn't know you could make moonshine in an air fryer. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. <laughs> we're not. We're not. <laughs> If there's any policemen out there listening, we're not. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> That's in the steel behind the building. Huh? <laughs> yeah. All right. So the uh, the the second annual Shriners uh, Steak Challenge with some of the top uh, teams in the nation going to be in downtown Jessup this Saturday. Is that right? Yes. Sir. This Saturday it'll be on the street between Cherry Street and Walnut Street, right along the. Um, train depot area there up to sugar and spice and the competition will start at what time we're going to be there i think the daylight. yeah we'll be there at daylight <laughs> but the, the cooks meeting starts at 10 mm-hmm. and that's when we start the steak draw so. okay and then the cooking will start at you, i think we turn in one at one thirty and one at three Hold all on right there. so and they right. cooking they cooking shifts yeah, yeah well you because the steak don't it's keep very long you what, cook two for each competition you cook it's two different contests in one day. So oh, you is? cook one yeah. and turn it in, and then you got a break, and then you cook the second round and turn it in. So when you, you cook, say a round, is that just one other steak? 
Now you cook two at the same time. Whichever one looks time. the best is oh, okay. the one you turn in. All right. So, so steak A turns in from two to two thirty. Steak B turns in from three thirty to four. And then anything blueberries from five to five fifteen. And the wards is at six thirty, not six. Okay, wards is six thirty. And then of course people can buy steak plates from uh, four to when. Four thirty to six, I believe. How Four thirty to six, do. they can buy uh, steak plates made by you know and cooked by some of the best uh, cookers in the steak cookers in the country, and uh, you get the baked potato and green beans with it. It's a fundraiser now for the Jessup Shriners. All this is a fundraiser for the Jessup Shriners. So when you buy that steak plate, you know that money's going to a just extremely good cause. That's right. All it's right, for the Bob, kids. Questions, comments for our. Steak guys this morning. Mm-hmm. Just appreciate y'all coming in. We appreciate it. Us. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Anything else? That's I'll it. Do it. That's hope, it. Hope to well, see you Saturday. See you Saturday. All right. Take care. Thank you, sir. All right. 105.5 FM and Jess of Big Dog Country Radio, WIFO. Bob, we got Wayne County baseball today? Yep. Wayne County at Richmond Hill today at 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock today. And how many other games do we have this week? Thursday and Friday at home. Good. Richmond Hill here Thursday at 6 and Glen Academy here Friday at 6. So, so today, Thursday, Friday schedule. Okay. And so that uh, this week, and then uh, did I hear you tell Jonathan we start next region, region next schedule, week? Yeah. Next week's the region, Monday, Wednesday, Friday affair. And we have three other teams in the region. Is that correct? Four. Four other. Okay. It's Four others? Us, Wayne, Ware. I'm sorry. It's Wayne, Ware. South Effingham, Statesboro, New Hampshire. Five okay, teams so in the region. five teams in the region. So for other teams, and we play those each week, three games. Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Friday. Wednesday, and Friday, kind of like a tournament. Right. And so we'll do that over the next four weeks. Uh, wrapping up, going into um, to, to, to region and state. State playoffs. Okay. Well, sounds good. What else is going on, Bob? Nothing. Nothing? Well, I was a news person. You're not supposed to say nothing. Presidential primary voting still going underway. I said a reminder, you can do it this week, next week, Saturday, 9 to 4, they'll be open. So if you haven't voted yet, still have time to do so. The date okay. the 24th, but all the early voting taking place as we speak. All right. Okay. It's been pretty steady. Yeah, it has been pretty steady. Yeah. And what amazes me is this is for the presidential primary. Uh, preference primary, and so many people are voting Republican, which was you really only have one candidate, uh, Trump. But I guess it's just folks just want to go down there and I show their support. I suppose there's several other people on that ballot for the Trump. Republican. Yeah, oh, I didn't know yeah, that. He's not the only person on the ballot. I didn't know that many people yeah. qualified. Who are they, Bob? I don't know. Have you have no that. idea. I haven't heard anything from anybody about any of them. Man. I have to get to him. I haven't been down there. I didn't yet. know there were other ones on there. There's several. There's other. several of them on there that have qualified. You know, that's a, that's takes quite a bit to qualify. That's what I heard. I heard there's several on the ballot besides him. So. Okay. Well, the the big news, of course, is on the Democratic side. You know, our, you know, as according how um, Bernie and um, and Biden do today in Michigan. Um, you know, Bernie uh, Bernie Sanders won the last time against uh, Hillary, but uh, today they think it's going to be the other way around. But you just don't know how those voters are going to do once they get in there in that ballot. So won't know until later on tonight how things go in Michigan. Michigan's the big state today. There's several states that are voting uh, for the prefer- presidential pr- um, primary today. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. And someone says there is a, I got to get closer to the screen, a taco fundraiser at the soccer, soccer varsity game today. So I guess the varsity soccer teams are playing at home today. Playing State Spur today at home. Okay. And so there's going to be a taco fundraiser at the soccer varsity game today. Best in town. And uh, are they playing at five and seven as usual? I believe so. I believe so. One of the teams starts at five, one starts at seven. Sometimes they rotate that between the boys and the girls. Uh, so if you enjoy tacos and you want to watch some great varsity soccer by Wayne County High School and enjoy the time out there, get out there about five. And then, of course, the second game will start at seven. So get out there any time during that time period and watch the varsity soccer teams play and enjoy the best tacos in town. It says Taco Fundraiser at the soccer varsity game today at the Wayne County High School Varsity Soccer Field. Uh, They're right behind J.C. Stadium. All right. Anything else? All right, Bob. Have a good day.
All right, the world famous Butch and Bob Show brought to you by Murphy Builder Supply, where the builders buy, located on Northeast Broad Street in downtown Jessup, right down from the big red caboose. And brought to you by Nips Car Wash. Nips Car Wash, located on Highway 301 South, just past McDonald's there on the left-hand side. The world-famous Butch and Bob Show.